All right, guys. First things first. You should see the angles that uh, Alpha's taking right now for this for this uh, for this shot. So they say, shout out Alpha. He had his legs up and everything at one point. Like, bro, what is he doing right now? He's doing everything he possibly can to get a good shot of the deck profile. But <laughs> if you guys uh, don't know already, we're doing a deck profile in today's video, and the deck we're actually showing off today is Sword Soul. This is actually a deck that I saw online recently, and I was like, man, the deck hasn't changed too much, but. I think it can actually be competitive in today's format. Of course, when you build it with the correct hand traps and the correct cards to kind of combat against today's format, right? So uh, yeah, I want to show off Sword Soul today. And it's a deck that uh, I had a lot of success with when I was playing it originally. Haven't played it in a while, but I uh, wanted to return to it. By the way, before we go, before we continue, I want to say that we're uploading every single day in the month of December. So make sure to like and subscribe to stay tuned into all of that. And that's really all I got to say. So let's get right into the deck profile. So here we are. We're starting off with three Dogmatica Ecclesia. That's not Dagmatic Ecclesia, that is Incredible Ecclesia. So we're starting off with three Incredible Ecclesia. Uh, going second, it's really important with this deck. Uh, you really want to go first, but you need other cards that can kind of help you go second. Her going second is kind of like an extender for you. She can special summon herself, so it's really powerful in that sense. And uh, I just like maxing out on her. She's really good as a consistency piece. Uh, then, of course, we're playing three Moye. Moye is the best normal sound on the deck. Getting into any level eight synchros is really, really powerful with Moye. Three Long One, as well as two Taie. This is kind of standard. Like, I don't want to be that guy who just says standard with Sword Soul engines, but this is kind of like a standard Sword Soul engine. He's not great to start with, but he's good in the mid to late game. So you really want to play two Taie and then three of the ones you actually want to draw, which are these three, right? Continuing on with the Sword Soul package, we're playing three Emergence as well as one Blackout. And um, this, again, pretty standard. Three Rota and then a Blackout for you to search. I actually, for a long time, considered playing two Blackout, but I think one is all you actually need. So that's it for the Sword Soul cards over here. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. All of them are going to get you to level eight or level 10 Synchros. That's what they want to do. Then we're playing the Tengi package, of course. So we're playing three Vishuda, three Ashuna, three Edhara, as well as one Chitana. So the reason you're playing these, all, all at three essentially, except just the one Chitana, is because you need to be able to see them to kind of get your play started. And you need the Worms, of course, for the Sword Soul names. On top of that, the thing that I really like about these cards is they help you go second, which is really powerful. It's like an in-engine way or an in-deck way of going second without having to use like hand traps and whatnot. Vishuda, of course, is a board breaker as well for you. And then Ashuna and Edhara are both extenders. There's also combos where you go into Chengying, not Chengying, Chaofeng. You can go into Chao Fang and that's really powerful as well. But a card that I'm actually playing now that I never used to play is two Heavenly Dragon Circle. So I'm on two just because I feel like this card, you can play three, but I, I just like two. I think the ratios were perfect. And it's really important to actually be playing this now because you need to be dodging stuff like SP Little Knight and all these quick effects on your opponent's turn or that your opponent might have on your turn, I should say. So this card really helps you play around those kind of effects. And on top of that, it makes them kind of waste some effects, right? Yes, it sucks when you lose to Ash because it does lose to Ash, but otherwise, because you're playing all these names, I think Heavenly Eight makes a lot of sense right now just to be able to dodge hand traps, being able to dodge SP Little Knight and whatnot is really important, especially in a format like this one where you guys are going to see this is an engine but the rest of the deck and most other decks are just going to be playing a ton of hand traps hand traps are really prominent right now and you want to be able to dodge essentially all of those hand traps even board breakers right if you're going first it helps you dodge board breakers as well so that's it for the guess the main deck engines and then we're playing a little bit of a draw engine which is just two desires i think desires is pretty standard in this deck so two desires uh you're playing three of them, all the important stuff so two desires is fine and then a lot of hand traps we're playing three ash three crow and i actually opted to go for crow because it's really good into the unchained matchup which is kind of like really nice we're playing three imperm three droplet as well as two talents so i'm going to explain these ratios just right now real quick crow like i said this deck actually kind of has a hard time against unchained and crow is really good into unchained of course imperm and droplet as well is really powerful droplet is really good with uh the heavenly circle as well kind of the same logic of being able to dodge stuff with these two cards. So that's kind of why we're playing uh, the Droplet here as well. And Droplet being a board breaker is very powerful too, right? And then uh, I like to play Talents. I think Talents right now is just really good in today's format. To be honest with you, these are just the best hand traps and or going second cards that this deck can play. And it's the best ones for today's format specifically because it's good against the, the um, what's it called? Centurion matchups, the Unchained matchups, the Teal Limit matchups, et cetera, et cetera, right? You, anything you see, you're gonna be able to beat going first and going second with this deck, which I think is really powerful. So that's it for the main deck. It's actually 43 cards in the main deck, not 40 on the dot. I like playing more than 40 with this deck just because um, with desires and whatnot, I think 43 is perfectly fine. And the deck is super consistent anyways. For the extra deck, of course, we're playing two Shishao, one of the Chengying, as well as one of the Evil uh, Long One. These cards, of course, are really powerful and they're pretty standard in any Sword Soul list. Same with Baron. Baron is very powerful and standard again in Sword Soul list. Berserker as well is powerful and standard in Sword Soul list. These are just the best cards that you can make 
with your level eight and level 10 synchros. So these are kind of just like the best ones. And then a saucy card that I like to play, I know a lot of people don't like to play this or don't play this, but I think it's so powerful is just the Crimson Blader. It's really good against Despia of the branded builds. It's really good against um, even the Chimera builds. It's also really good against Centurion if you can get it off against Centurion as well. So this card is just randomly good and it kind of comes up. And then uh, we're playing two Baxia, which two Baxia, there we go. So we're playing two Baxia, of course, as well as the one Chao Fang. Baxia is really powerful when you're going second as well as a board breaker. And Chao Fang, when you're going first, helps you play around stuff like Nibiru and other hand traps. Then we are playing, oh, actually, before I continue, this is also really good as a, as a kind of a stun card against some decks as well. It doesn't come up too often, but it kind of comes up as like a floodgate. And then we're playing the one Shaman, three Monk of the Tenyi. And you guys might be wondering, why is this only 14 cards? because I don't have the 15th card. And uh, the 15th card is actually SP Little Knight. This deck doesn't focus on Link Summoning too much, but in very simplified game states, you can actually make SP Little Knight, which is really powerful. Um, this could also be Typhon. This could also be any generic 15th card that I want to show you guys. The 14 cards that I'm showing you guys, I feel like is mandatory. Maybe on the Crimson Blader. But other than that, I think the 15th card could kind of be up to preference. Typhon, SP Little Knight is what I actually suggest. I just don't have an SP with me. But that's it for the extra deck over here. We're gonna get this out of the way because I wanna show you guys a side deck. Of course, a side deck is always gonna be up to personal preference, but I will say with a side deck, I think this side deck works really well with this deck and in today's format in general. So three Gamma Seal, I hate Pearly, so I always like to play Kaijus in the side deck. Three Drone Lockbird, really good against Manadium and some other decks as well. Uh, just kind of a blowout card against a lot of rogue decks, right? So three Drone, not good enough to main in my opinion, but really good in the side deck. Then of course, we're playing one Harpies and two Lightning Storm for backward decks. And then when we go first, because you are, you know, if you're going into game three, or you lose game one, you're probably not gonna wanna go first. And going first, D-Barrier, of course, is really powerful. As well as Judgment, because Judgment makes it so that you don't lose to cards like Dark Ruler No More or any board breaker cards when you set up your board. So you guys can see this side deck over here. While I always say that you guys should have your side deck up to personal preference, up to your locals. So if your locals a lot of combo players, then you side hate for combo decks. If it's a lot of backer players, you side hate for macro decks. But this is kind of like a side deck that kind of deals with everything, which is really nice. That's it though, that's the deck profile. I know Sword Soul is a deck that hasn't, I guess, really evolved much, but I think it's actually really powerful and it's really budget now because with the rarity collection, all the hand traps, all the board breakers that I showed you guys are all super rares. The, the tangies all come as rares and pretty, sure they're also common, I'm pretty sure they're also common. So they're very budget. This is a budget deck that you guys can build and it can be competitive, which is really nice. So thank you guys all for watching. Thank you Alpha for being a cameraman once again. I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys did enjoy. Again, we're uploading every single day in the month of December. Make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned with all of that. And with that, there you go, signing up. Peace.